everybody. Welcome to Artists on Lockdown. I am Ron Onesti, hanging and banging with two of the greatest drummers in rock and roll history coming up in just a minute. This is episode 20. We got a special guest. Uh, Kip Winger will be with us in just a couple minutes. want to bring to the uh, uh, to the uh, the stage right now. Usually we do this a little bit uh, differently, but tonight I'm going to bring the legend himself from Vanilla Fudge, from the Rod Stewart Band, from the Jeff Beck Band, from so many other projects. Please welcome my older brother. I shouldn't say that. My big brother, Carmine of Peace. Carmine. Yeah, big brother. Big, uh, brother. big brother. Big brother. So now we're normally, bringing the little brother. We could bring the little brother on. Well, see, normally I start with the little brother, you know? Yeah, like yeah, we yeah. need a big, a big intro because we missed him tremendously last week. Yeah. Our last show with Ted Nugent was a great one. Yeah, it was. And, uh, but he couldn't be with us. So let's, I need a, I want like a, a drum roll. All right. For yeah, a drummer. Oh, oh, oh. A drummer okay, let's do this. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, one heel from last night, from last the one, the only, our little big brother, Vinny Apathy. Otherwise known as Carmine 2. <laughs> what is he doing? There he is. <laughs> Watch out, look. That is awesome. Ooh, look at that. You should have a picture of your face. It would look better. Uh, yeah, that's a matter of opinion there, big brother. Wow, yeah, look at that, that's, man. That's good. That's it. Now that's good. So we, we missed go. you, Vinny. We missed you last week. Well, I had to take uh, the day off because you guys were changing the musical intro to put some of Dio and Sabbath in there. So, yes, and that is still working as we speak. Matter of fact, I think we just sit here silently and wait for it to happen. It sounded the same to me. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I have to listen to it again. I think, yeah, I think you maybe tuned in a little bit late and didn't hear the beginning part with you, all your yeah. solos at the beginning. So we're working yeah. on it. Okay. Anyway, how'd you guys uh, do this week? You have a good week, guys. Yeah, it was good. Oh yeah, I, I see you went. I see you went shirt shopping there, Carmine. <laughs> I did. I I, I thought I uh, you know I did an interview with uh, not a white Michael Walden the other day, and and he wore all this sparkle and jet. I should have wore this on that, but I didn't. I wore just a regular shirt. But I'm just well, wearing. I'm just wearing this to be in competition with you, Ron, because oh, you're always yeah. wearing cool oh, wow. T-shirts. Well, you know what? This cool T-shirt says the word winger on here. And let me tell you something. I know you guys know him. I know you guys have played with him. I'm so fortunate that I get to work with guys like you and guys like him. One of the greatest guys, I got to tell you, you know, he really, I'm, I don't want to say it until he, uh, before he goes on because I'm going to embarrass him because he really is one of the truly nicest guys in rock and roll. Gives so much back to his fans. We love having him at the Arcata Theater. Let's bring him on. Please welcome our guest for episode 20 of Artists on Lockdown, Kip Winger. There he is. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Well, I love you. My mother didn't pay much attention to me as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Hi, Kip. What are you guys up to? Nice know, to you. Welcome to the show. What you been up to besides recording? I know you're doing that. You're calling uh, for, actually from the studio right now in Nashville, right? No, he's calling from his car. I am. I'm yeah, in my car. Am. My car with my nice Wi-Fi. Uh, I'm out in the boonies at my friend's house on 113 acres. And uh, I don't do recording studios. I have all my stuff in, in, in cases, and I just go to different cool places to, uh, you know, so I'm never stuck in the same place. So we've been working out at my friend Joe's, and uh, we're set up in the living room. And, uh, you know, we've been working here since December. Wow. But, you know, we're not not so much, but uh, we've done about four four uh, stretches of 10 days. Reb's coming again tomorrow. So. Well, if you ever want a, a really cool place in Florida, that guy uh, over there, Carmine's got a great place to record. <laughs> it looks like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a nice little place. Vinny set me up. He built a computer and set me up and... Uh, Taught me how to use it. I'm getting some pretty good drum sounds in here now. But you're not you're not set up to to record other instruments just yet. Not yet. I've been trying, but <laughs> 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 yeah, we're having problems with getting equipment now. You know. 
Yeah, that's it, tough. It, yeah, it's really bad. From China, everything's in China. And you yeah, everything's in China. Out. Here we go. Hey, Kip. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, first of all, is, I don't that know where, is that where that commie flu comes from? Oh, Ted Nugent, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Carmine Nugent. Here we go. <laughs> You know, Kip, I, I said this in the intro. Really, I gotta say, thank from the on behalf of the fans, on behalf of us venue owners. You no, know, you really are one of the classiest guys. I gotta say, in metal, in rock and roll, you come early, you do your thing, but you give so much back to the fans. You really, really do. I mean, your following of your fans is so deep. I know. I never realized I had um, more female friends when you come to the Arcata Theater. You know, they all want for because of guys like you, I got to create a venue that has just one front row of like 1000 seats because <laughs> everybody wants the front row when you're here. Well, that's nice. I appreciate it. We, you know what? We appreciate you because you <laughs> are a very rare venue owner. I mean, you do it yeah, right. right. You really yeah. do it right. I mean, I've played a lot of places in life and a lot of them are really, they just don't do it right. And you do it right. So it must be that because you do it right, I'm really in a good mood when I play your place. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's, and it's he's got the best meatballs. My meatballs. My meatballs. You know, all kidding aside, you know, a lot of, I mean, even my peers, they don't realize just how, I mean, look, the money's got to be right. The money's got to be there. We know that. The sound system has got to be there. I mean, you can't skimp on that stuff. But it is. We, we kid about meatballs. We kid about the food. But it, I ain't kidding. I know, I know. But you do it right, motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, you do it right. But, but uh, you know, I realized that just the little things, because you guys are on the road, you're coming here, and um, and you've, you've, you've taken some long bus trip or a long flight. It's, we're an hour and 20 minutes or whatever from O'Hare, so that's a bitch. So, you know, you come here, and the little things make a difference. And my peers, you know, the other venue owners, I don't know. They just don't get it. They chintz out. They cheap out. They try to... I'm like, man, make these guys feel like they're at home. It makes it, 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 it comes back to you in spades. They don't get it though. I don't understand it. Yeah, you know that check, right, you, go the ahead. Check, the check you gave me, Ron. Oh, by the, yeah. <laughs> oh no, again? Well, <laughs> sorry. Well, listen, you guys, how do you guys oh. know Kip? You, have you played some, um, uh, uh, some of those uh, uh, what are those school things that you do, Carmine? <laughs> Two rock and roll fantasy camp. Yep. Uh, I yeah. like, uh, I I used to do them, but I I didn't get along with David. So. <laughs> oh man, I know Vinny does. You play now. I've, I've jammed a, I've jammed a lot with Vinny, but not so much with Carmine. Man. No. I'm waiting for my chance. Yeah, yeah. Well, me and Vinny are doing a uh, one oh, yeah. online. We're doing an online one next month. Oh, cool. But uh, I haven't really done the – I was involved when they first started doing it, you know, yeah. like years and years ago when uh, I was playing Slingle and Drums and Gibson was involved involved in it. and Because uh, Gibson had me on a salary for Slingle and they, they made me go to the one in New York and do like what they have, like Gene Simmons do. I went to every class and played with everybody, you know. But uh, just since then, Dave has gotten a lot bigger with, you know, Hiring yeah. Aerosmith guys and Kiss guys and, and all that, you know. But uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, Vinny, you've done it though. I right? do it a lot. Yeah, I was scheduled to do three or four of them this year, but that didn't happen. So. Yeah, well. But Kip and I had some good jams, and uh, the fun thing is, we don't have. It's not a gig. It's you know, we get to actually jam. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, you know. <laughs> it says Carmine 2 on you, Vinny. There you go. You just, that's why I've been calling him Carmine 2 for the last <laughs> 10 minutes. I, I, just, I just noticed that. I just saw that. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, the other, um, the other thing is is, is uh, I got Vinny to jam with me with with uh, with uh, Pat Thrall in Vegas one time at the at Vamp. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we oh, did yeah. a bunch of cover. We did a bunch of covers. It was kind of like a I think it was one of my solo shows, and I was like, "Screw this! I want to jam with these guys." So I, yeah. I think Camp Rock Camp was in town, and I called Vinny and asked him if he was game to do it. And uh, Vamped is a very cool club in Vegas yeah, for anybody yeah. Who's, yeah. who's never been there. It is cool. And, and uh, uh, Coker, what's the guy's name who who builds the cars? Yeah, the uh, count, the count, 
Danny. 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 Danny Coker and his wife Corey book that. They own the club. Yeah. And yeah. they book it, and it's a fucking cool club. I love that place. Yeah. We had a great jam, and Pat Thrall doesn't come out of hiding very much. Uh, you know, so that was fun to do that. We played Boom Boom with with Danny and. Uh, um, I think there was one. There was a keyboard player there that night. I don't remember his name. He's more like a Broadway dude. Yeah, I don't, um, remember, I don't remember him. Uh, yeah, that was a fun gig. Yeah, so I like do, I I like doing that shit because I was I'm like right, uh, so I'm like right under you guys generation wise. But I was following all you when I was uh, I started in with my brothers when I was like eight, and that I was born in '61. Uh. So you know. <laughs> It was fun for me to meet all you guys and jam with you and uh, when I, you know, uh, come yeah. on, I'm, I'm yeah. still waiting for that. But I remember. Yeah, I, see, I see you got a nice collection of turquoise. I do too. I don't have them on now, but uh, I've been wearing turquoise since uh, 1967. You know, and uh, oh. it's, it ends up as my birthstone. It's my birthstone. You know. Oh, awesome! Yeah, I, love, so, I lived in I lived in New Mexico for I don't know seven years, and I yeah, uh, you get a lot of it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bought a couple of great pieces in there when in the days when we used to tour with Hendrix, you know. And uh, I, I remember the, the, the Native Americans out on the street with blankets, having all these things. I bought like a big, big turquoise ring, like the ones you're wearing for twenty five bucks. Yeah, uh, I was yeah. like, whoa! And then somebody stole it. I lost it on a plane oh, coming home from China, actually. You know, I had my all my jewelry in a bag, and it, it fell out. I had all kinds of turquoise, and it fell out of the plane. Yeah, <laughs> it, it did. Yeah, it fell out of the bag, and it, I don't know where it went. But it hit somebody out. on the head too, on the on the ground. Oh, we're that still, must have hurt. We're still paying that lawsuit off. Wow. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, one of my one of the biggest shows, uh, one of my first big shows was Alice Cooper, you know, and actually my first big show was Alice Cooper. And as you guys know, his set guillotines, the trust, fake trust, like it was falling, uh, an automobile that like was in an accident. And I'm thinking to my, holy cow, is this how all rock shows are? Now, Kip, you're obviously with, uh, you, uh, with, uh, with Alice, when you were with the Alice Cooper show, first of all, how did that all happen? How did you land on that gig? And was it as crazy as it is now? I was uh, um, I was in New York and I uh, was friends with a producer named Bo Hill who was who had just produced Rat and was having a lot of success and I'd worked with him for a very long time in Denver since I was about sixteen. Mm -hmm. At the time I was about twenty two and he called me up and they were doing a record at Atlantic on Sixty Second and Broadway. I'm sure you get you guys remember. Yeah, that. yeah, I recorded that too. That was great. I mean, they had like four rooms. And, yeah. You know, it was fucking. Arif Bardeen was always in one of them. Yeah. That was, Tom Dowd was always in one. That was an amazing. That was that historically. That was an amazing place. So we did our. Well, he was recording in there. He kept a room in there at that time, and they needed a bass player on four songs. And he called me up and said, "Get up here right away. We need four songs on bass." And so you know, I went up and. I was a really big Alice Cooper fan. So, I mean, I, 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 we hit it off cause I knew everything about him. And, uh, were those new songs that you, the four songs, were they new ones? Yeah. 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 They were doing a new album constrictor mm -hmm. and, uh, Kane Roberts, the guitar player was super cool. We're still very good friends. <laughs> and, uh, Kane suggested that I mentioned to Alice, if they go out on the road that, you know, think, you know, consider me or whatever. And they, Man, I got the gig. Like I didn't even have to do anything. I just played those four songs, and then I got in the band. And uh, I was wa I was waiting tables at the time in, in Hoboken, oh, New Jersey. Hoboken. Oh, I didn't know you're from Jersey. I didn't know that. No, I'm from Colorado, but I was living in Hoboken. Oh my God. And uh, and then you know, three months later, we were on tour. We did uh, you know the first night of that tour was Joe Lewis in Detroit live yeah. on MTV. Nice. No, so was that cool. that was before Winger? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. way before okay. Winger. Yeah, I didn't know you played with Alice. Yeah, yeah I, played, was a... I did one. I did two. Two. Well, I, I played. On, I played on a. I played on albums ever since. I played on. I mean, I I was on Hollywood Vampires, all that shit. I was. Mm -hmm. I always do something with them, but. Uh, yeah, I was in that band. We did a year tour. I did two albums, and then I left. What year was that? 
I can never remember, man. It was like 85, 86 ish. I did an album with him in 80, 82 at Richie Pazza Studio in uh, Studio City with my buddy Dwayne Hitchings. And Alice was all messed up on drugs. And he was, you know, it wasn't the best time for him. That's but, interesting, uh, 82, because, yeah, he had, when I got with him, he was just out of rehab. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's where I was going because that same thing here. I mean, he was just coming out of rehab and it was nothing. The only thing we could have on the bus or anywhere was water, period. No yep. soda, nothing. We were all disallowed to have any of that stuff. That's where I was going. If he was coming, you know, when you were with him, was he just going through that strange time, you know, that transition time? Yeah, it was really, there was, I mean, you, you, you weren't allowed to have anything. I mean, we, it was like keep all that shit away from analysts, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, he didn't, he was, he wasn't like a, he didn't act like an addict or anything. He was super, no. you know, I mean, it was more the was people like, around him, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Alice is very bright. I mean, he's fucking so intelligent. I mean, it's funny as shit, too. So, I mean, yeah. I, remember, I think he didn't skip a beat, you know? We, and, uh, we I remember he used to say he'd sit down and watch television and he'd write his lyrics. You know, while watching TV, getting idea lyric ideas from different television shows he watched. When we played together, it was Alice Cooper and Heaven and Hell. So one night, they said, Alice was going to the movies. You want to go? I said, who wouldn't want to go to the movies with Alice Cooper? <laughs> so we went to the mall, and he bought everybody popcorn. And then it was really cool. People coming up for autographs and stuff for him. And it was really cool. He's such a great guy. Then he likes to go to the malls. Yeah, walked around the malls and and just hung out. It's really yeah. Cool. It's funny, Ron. You say I'm nice. I mean, Alice Cooper is the nicest dude, like in the yeah. business. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's really good. Dude. You know, he, they opened up for us at the Whiskey, 1967. Wow! <laughs> oh my God! Vanilla Fudge, God. and all they had on stage for the stage show, they had a, a door frame, right? And Alice would walk, you know, through the door frame with a rubber chicken. <laughs> wearing all these, all these women's outfits and stuff. And, you know, that's pretty much the whole stage act and just the makeup and moody lighting and, and you know, dolls and really crazy stuff like that. And when we we saw him, they were signed to a Frank Zappa's label at the time. And, you know, we said, they, they deserve Frank Zappa, <laughs> you know, because, well, yeah. Frank Zappa deserves them, I should say. And uh, it, it was so weird because that was the first time we ever seen something so strange on stage, you know? Like yeah. That. He, he was the original one, right? I mean, Kiss yeah. and all those guys kind of followed suit. I mean, he yep. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, uh, Kip, so, you know, we I, there's so much to your music, too. I mean, obviously, it's been called so many different things. Is it metal, heavy metal? Is it glam rock, you know, your original stuff? Um, but I love the orchestral part. And, and and the way you go about your the, your writings and that you're very into the classical end of things and a lot of people I know your deep fans know but a lot of people know don't realize just how much you got involved with classical music. <clears throat> oh yeah, he did. Man, it's just because I heard the music and I was getting frustrated over the years that I wasn't able to, to articulate it. So I, uh, you know, in the uh, when the whole. It was kind of like uh, in 93 when grunge came in and, mm -hmm. the, and, and the bands like us were like out of a gig. Yeah. I, uh, I, I took it upon myself to go study his cat new it at the university of New Mexico. And then, and then when I moved to Nashville, I, I got another uh, composition teacher at Vanderbilt. And then after that, I, I met this other guy in New York and I flew to New York once a month and, and, uh, and just, I really just wanted to learn how to orchestrate, you know, do real, you know, orchestral music on their terms, basically, you know. And uh, it came from doing ballet when I was a kid, man. I was, really? Uh, yeah, I studied karate with my brothers, and then I, I, I decided to to do ballet. It was very musical, and and it was like I did my first class, and I was like, this is amazing, and the music was incredible listening to Stravinsky, like, who the fuck wrote that? Because I was playing, you know, ain't seen a night, things work out right on the, you know, grand funk and shit. And I'm hearing, mm -hmm. I'm hearing all this classical music going, what the fuck is that? So I, I, I was afraid of it for a very long time. And then when we were all kind of out of a gig, I was like, hey, man, I, you know, I'm going to do this. So, 
you know, I wrote, I, I studied and studied and studied my ass off. And then I wrote some shit. And, uh, I mean, I got nominated for a Grammy for classical composition in 2017, which was uh, crazy. Really cool. Crazy. Yeah. Now, do you, do you put any of that out? I mean, is that, is it? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's out. I'm there, I have an, I have an album called conversation with Nijinsky. Actually funny. It's, it's, it's out, but I'm in, I'm uh, moving digital distributors right now for that, but that's out. That was number one on the classical charts, actually. Wow. And then uh, that's that's amazing. That's fantastic. It really and, is. And uh, I just was commissioned by Nashville Symphony to write an album of music with them. I'm, I just finished my first symphony. Well, not just February of this year, I finished my first symphony. That was supposed to be premiered October, but now it's all canceled until next year. And a violin concerto for their concert master. So you wrote a violin concerto? I'm doing that now, actually. I wow. finished I did a twenty-five minute symphony, four movements. Oh. And uh so you, know, you write you write all the parts, all the all the parts, the drum parts, the uh I do. That was well, the main wow. that was the that was the main thing. I really wanted to I, I, I went I didn't go to school, but I studied with some really serious composers and learned how to articulate for all of the instrument you know all that stuff because for me you're not you're not like a serious composer unless you actually do it all you can't like write a melody and then hire the guy that knows the craft i mean you really gotta you know you gotta you gotta do it yourself sorry have you done any any so I do piano it, uh, work like piano concertos or anything with the piano i have not but i would write a, a piano concerto um and I have a couple people in mind that I would like to write for, but to be honest with you, it's torture. I mean, it sounds glamorous and it's like really cool and it's very rewarding, but it's fucking torture. I mean, it yeah, really, I, I would think it would be. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it'll take me like a week to do, you know, eight bars or yeah. nine bars of music. Cause you're, counterpoint and orchestration are you just writing you're just writing it on music or are you playing it on something first i do both i i i, I program and i use logic to compose and i have all the vienna symphonic library shit wow. and then but i but i do do pencil and paper when i work out uh counterpoint and stuff like that and that's stuff you learned from uh these from teaching from, from the lessons you took yes i didn't read i didn't do anything at 35 years old i started at 35 and then wow now 59 so yeah wow i was self-taught man i was like god bless i was self-taught yeah self-taught musician uh i mean i i i read like very poorly piano music but i started it all when i was 35. but so you're doing these things is it it's obviously in nizhinsky style but is it actual like full-bodied um you know, concerto style uh, as a or, orchestral style versus. I mean, is it is it a rock? Like I'm in my head, I got like a rock opera going on. No man, it's it's, the, it's real deal. This sounds like the real deal stuff. Yeah, yeah no, it's it's. Well, I was on the pro, my first. You know, I, I I get programmed a lot with Stravinsky actually because I really. So the first program, yeah. I mean, I, the last the last time Nashville Symphony played my stuff, it was. I was on the bill with, uh, it was me, Stravinsky, and uh, there's a black pianist named Andre Watts who played a McDowell con piano concerto. Uh, wow. And so I get, and uh, you know, I get programmed. The, my programming with the symphony that I just wrote for Nashville Symphony is, is Beethoven and Winger. That's Come the program. On. I would yeah. take it out on the road. I would love that show. Are you it's kidding? too expensive, dude. Yeah, it, it's just that's the problem. It's really hard to get performed, and mm -hmm. I've been very lucky. Um, but you know, you have to get an orchestra to program your stuff. You know, how many pieces did you write it for? the The symphony, I think, is uh, you know sixty and up, probably. Oh man, that's There's five, amazing. Five percussion parts, so. Strings, winds, brass, uh, uh, strings, wind, uh, percussion, and piano. But I, the piano, the piano plays. It's not a piano part. It's really just. I, I use grand piano 
doubling bass and stuff like that because right, right. because I come from the rock world, <clears throat> a lot of percussion effects that you can't get with strings and stuff. So I'll like have the you know the pianos like pound out with the with the uh -huh. with the double basses. You'll be doubling the the stuff on the piano just to get a more evil sound, you know. Oh, and what else? What else do they use? Do you use in <laughs> the good, percussion? Evil. Yeah. What, else, evil. what else do you use in the percussion end? Uh, well, I mean, I write a very solid timpani part to begin with, and then I'll have like in this last thing I had. Uh, uh, well, several gongs, toms, wow. it's toms, and it's hard to get our orchestra guys to understand how you guys do toms because mm. when I write for toms. I always want flams, you know, right. and you can't, and you have to write it a very specific way. You just can't say flam this. You have to like, no, really, you have to write, write it as a flam. You have to understand exactly how to do that. Um, marimba, Celeste, Mom. Si you know, suspended symbol, finger symbols, you know, wow. uh, all, this all, is all deep, the, man, this is deep. Know. How when you write, when you? you write a flam, is it written the way we, I read music. I write books, and you know, I studied and all that. A flam is a little note with a tie with a big note. Is that yes. how you write? It? And he, these the, the yeah, guys don't I, understand I that. I ha yeah, they do, they do. But yeah, but but when there you exactly, uh, exactly. Yeah, flam. there it is right there, right. Yeah. So flam beats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, flam beats. So, but well, do my, they understand it? That's the point. Do they well, understand my, those guys? You know, my point is that when you're talking, because they're so used to playing very perfect uh, orchestra music, and when I want, you know, I'm like, hey, I want this to rock a little bit. So, you know, what I did in this, it's interesting with the symphony I wrote, I wrote, um, what I did was I took uh, four words, uh, three of them are Greek words, and I, um, and I made Morse code, <laughs> and I trans. Nice. And did the, I, I turned them into Morse code, and I made the rhythm uh, based off the Morse code of those words. Like um, one, the third movement is is metamorphosis. It goes ba 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 that was just da 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 ba da ba da ba da. That's just in four. You know? four. I, I mean, I have a lot of weird time changes and stuff like that. Good, good. Uh, did any, did anybody first, answer you? Did anybody answer me? What do you mean? You said Morse, Morse code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh well, it's about a. <clears throat> it's about, it, the, the theme. The theme is. It, well, there's a. I can't actually tell you this because this is. Uh, this is coming when I do my talks for Nashville Symphony, but um, uh, yeah, no, nobody answered me to answer your question. <laughs> okay, all right, not yeah. There was that's that's really cool. But that's great. you should have got. You should, did you ever have Rod think about Rod playing drums against the orchestra with all I the have thought, timings? I, I have thought about that, and I had to call him up for some, you know, some of that stuff that Vinny just put up, you know, because. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I was like trying to figure out how to write some stuff, I had to call Rod Morgenstein. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what is that? Uh, Young Frankenstein? Club Luca. <laughs> I had wow, to. Luca. The first, the, the first movement of the piece is SOS, which is ba 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 yeah, exactly. So I was, I was, going, I was trying to help Rod get Rod help me how I should write, what time signature I should put that in to get the most out of it, you know. So wow. really, uh, something, man. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Uh, People don't realize just how deep your musicality so, is. So what timing did you put it in? You remember? It's, it's just in it six. Like seven. It, it, it sounds a, like it's, a six it's, or it's a seven. A, yeah. It's just a six, and and uh, and I and I spread it out all <laughs> over the, you know. You know, at, by the by the end of it, the whole orchestra, the the last statement of the first movement, the whole orchestra, you know, in in quadruple forte is ga 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 ga. You know, that's how it ends on the first. Nice. Movement. Ah, that's cool. So it's, it's uh, very cool. It's very rock. I had 
I had a friend of mine who's deep in the classical world and doesn't doesn't hang in the rock world. He goes, his, he listened to it. Goes, I like because I have a MIDI rendering of it. He goes, I really like this piece, although the end of that first movement was very crass. Crass. And, and I thought, crass. yes, <laughs> yeah, I right. need that to be crass. I've where offended can, you. Yes. Where can we hear some of this? Well, it's like I say, it's uh, it was supposed to be premiered in October, so we're waiting for the schedule. And uh, and they're recording it, so you know um, I don't actually know. I mean, I could privately send you my MIDI MIDI version of, which is pretty good. I mean, it, oh, it's, to hear it. Yeah, thank you. Oh, we all yeah. would love to love to hear it. My God, I mean, just, you, you know, can't hear it. You're not a musician. Yes, yeah. I am. You don't I, know. I, what a, I, you don't know what a flam is. Yes, I do. <laughs> it's it's what a flam. you do. Ah, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's like, well, when I bake, I make flambe. It's the same thing, isn't oh, it? Oh, that's true. Yeah, flambe. <laughs> well, and that's what I was talking about again the musicality, because, you know, again, you talked about glam rock, heavy metal, but, but you're talking about metal, prog metal <laughs> that you've been classified as well, progressive metal. Um, and you actually did a little work with another one of our good friends over here, uh, Alan Parsons, who is a pride guy, of course. You know, um, how did that all happen? Uh, you getting together with Alan? Man, I you guys know Jim Pedrig, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Intimately, yeah. yeah so. He was on. He was on the show too. Sure. I love Jim. So Jim yeah. did these benefits, and he used to invite me to them. If he still does them, I'm not invited, and he might be pissed at me for some not reason. Not at all. That's reason one guy's gonna get pissed at anybody. Believe me. Yeah, I, lo I love Jim. So he invited me to the thing. Actually, you know, Kelly Keege from Night Ranger uh, turned me on to Jim, introduced me to Jim, and then I went up and did I did a, a benefit, and Alan was at the benefit, and we all did like a couple songs, and and I was a big Alan fan, big Alan fan. Yep. And uh, I really, you know, I just met Alan. It was just backstage, like God, I'm a huge fan. Very nice yeah. to meet you. That was it. And then I was, I had just landed at LAX and, and I got a phone call and, uh, and it was like, you know, hello, Kip, it's Alan Parsons. I'd like you to be my lead singer. I was like, fucking tell me where to show up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> another so, great guy. Another great guy. Well, the great story, and I've told this story many times, is that when I was, when I was 15 in a band with my brothers, I sent him my demo tape and he fucking answered me. And I still really? have the letter. Yeah, uh, so it was 1970-something, uh, and I – which must have been 77, and I showed up at the first gig, and I'm like, check this out, Alan. You wrote me back, dude. You're a good guy. <laughs> That's another good guy. No, he's a great guy. You know, great we had him guy. here We had him here on my birthday, and he found out about it. You know, just – I mean, somebody, whatever. And in the middle of his show, he's, he's – and, and even his people say that he never does – once he gets his going on his show, he doesn't stop – in the yeah, middle of the true, show, he stops it and he plays "Happy Birthday" to me. Back, I'm, I have to walk out from backstage, and then we take a picture. It's like a kindergartner being picked up by his grandpa. The guy's seven feet tall. The guy's a monster. Me next to him, yeah, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> well, it's a, and, and the, the end of it went "Happy Birthday." Thanks for those meatballs. That's right. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear. <laughs> That's why he did that. You know, you mentioned Kelly Keege. Again, you know, I, again, I'm so just honored to, at my stage, Vinny, Carmine, you, Kelly with Night Ranger several times, Doug from King's X, he was uh, here oh, several yeah. times. What, uh, and obviously you're, that's, that's your mob band right there. Any uh, possibility of, you know, that's what I've been finding with all this stuff with this lockdown. There's a lot of things that are, are, are happening or can happen or will happen that wouldn't have normally happened uh, except for all this lockdown stuff. A lot of reunions. Yeah, and like like the show. Exactly. But boom, boom. <laughs> um, but reunions, a lot of reunions are happening. Any chance you guys doing any, anything, uh, any mob stuff? I no, there probably isn't. And that 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 was a record that I just kind of got called in to help finish. And I ended up doing a lot more than I intended to do. I love that album actually. That yeah, me too. Thing. And uh for you you guys probably don't know what we're talking about. It was a record with Kelly Keegi, Reb Beach, me, Doug Pinnock, mm -hmm. and um who's the keyboard player yeah. for um Ron, do you remember the keyboard players? No, name? I just know I just Tim Timothy Drury. Oh my God, Timmy! Jeez. Yeah, and uh, and and there were some really fun songs on that, and and 
I've always been a huge King's X fan. A lot of musicians are King's yep. X fans. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Doug, Doug's a lovely guy, and his voice is so fucking cool. I was guy. very excited to just record his voice. You know, that was an, a, a really cool experience uh, in itself. Yeah. And, uh, I had yeah. him on. I had him on my Katazush record. Doug, He's a, I, went, I went to Texas and got him and and. Uh, and the guitar player, um, which I went blank on his name now. What's the guitar player? King's X. Guys. Oh, now I'm going blank. Uh, oh, my oh gosh. My they were just oh, here. They're coming oh, back. Come on. Ty Tabor. Ty Tabor, right. Oh, that's a team. So I got him and Ty on, on the track. And uh, once I got uh, Doug on the track, I went and got Ingve. And Ingve says, I want to be on the track with Doug. Really? Yeah. So I did that, and when I when I, it's funny enough, when I got Mick Mars, Mick Mars said I want to be on the track with Edgar Winter because Edgar Winter sang I want to track. So those were weird combinations, you know. Doug and, cool. and, Bay and Edgar and Mick Mars is really off the wall. That's awesome. That's weird but, but Doug, but Doug was a big Cactus fan when I met Doug, and uh, and uh, Ty and the band, uh, we were on tour with uh, King's X, Blue Murder, and. Uh, and Billy Squire back, you know, oh, whatever wow. it was in '89, and I walked on. You know, I'm I'm always the kind of guy when I like to get to know the opening act. You know, so I walked on their bus and they had Cactus playing on the bus. Oh wow! No kidding. And I went, oh my god! He goes, oh man, we're big Cactus fans, and we immediately hit it off. You know, that's we're awesome. Good friend. Wait, wait, hey, I love them. What's Billy Squire doing, man? I just Nothing. wrote a. I wrote a song uh -huh. that I just I'm did, done. like you know how when you write a song and you and you don't know the words yet, you're like, don't you go back. You know, like no words, but it, it, it reminded me of Billy Squire. <laughs> what the fuck's Billy Squire up to? Man? No, man, yeah. I've been trying for years to get them, and I can tell you, it's the hardest thing. There's a couple of guys out there that just won't do it, and you know, it's not even why. Much. I, I wow. you know what? The agents don't That's know. Weird. You know, Dion is another one. Wow. Great you know, I'm too. trying to get Dion back. I had him once, and everybody loves Dion. He won't do it. I don't know. Who's Dion? Dion who? Demucci. I mean, the Wanderer? The Wanderer. The Wanderer. Wow. Yeah. Well, because he's probably 80 years old now. No, he's doing it. He does it in Florida by you or all the other 80 really? years old. Yeah. Huh? Hey, shout out to you. <laughs> <laughs> I did that for Carmine, too. Yeah. <laughs> you shut up, too, Vinny. I'll tell oh, your mother. You know what, Kip? You're in Nashville right now. You're living there, been there for a while. I know we mentioned earlier uh, before we got on that Tommy Kiefer's down there. What's in Nashville that brings you rock and rollers down there and makes you stay down there in Nashville? Number well, one, I it's mean, getting dark over there. I know. Look at it. Uh, I need a light. Okay. It's getting dark. Hey, hey, there you yeah. hey there. that's what you look like. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, sorry, you guys. It's on there. It's gonna get dark in here. Um, I, you know what? I don't know. I, we we were, we were on the Poison tour in two thousand two. Paul Taylor, the keyboard player for Winger, and I, we, I do, I needed to get out of Santa Fe, and I, want, I was wondering where to go. And at the time, I knew somebody that worked at Sony that wanted some help, you know, producing some records and stuff like that, and and kind of like to represent the rock. Cause there was really only country and I came to do that. Not, you know, it didn't really work out and I just kind of stayed, you know, that's how that happened. It's a great area. And the weather helps, of course. Well, I mean, I haven't been the biggest fan of Nashville, but it's gotten really great. And there's a lot of, now everybody's here. So it's, you know, you have to, one thing that's really incredible about it uh, is, is there's a, you know, within a very small circumference, there's a shitload of incredible studios, incredible mm -hmm. talent. You know, the best guitar player is working at the post office who blows, right. you know, every, you know. I mean, it's really uh, mm -hmm. very accessible. Tons of, you know, it's like the 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 business is at your fingertips. That's that's what that's the good thing. That's why people dig it. No. Um, it's hot and sweaty in the summer. The, the winters are dark and depressing. So, you know, whatever, but, huh. um, the spring and, and had, fall, the spring and fall are great. And awesome. you had a hurricane, right? Uh, tornadoes. Oh, tornadoes. Yeah. yeah. Gosh. Um, 
White Snake. Let's talk White Snake. You know what? I was uh, lucky enough to do a couple shows. I did one outdoor just a few years back, and Coverdale was very cool. He took a picture with me, which he I, he doesn't do, which, as you know. And um, the biggest compliment he gave me was that uh, the bugs in our area are very tasty. Because I had a stage. We did an outdoor thing, and we put the stage right on the river. And he goes, I hope. I hope these, uh, he said, I hope these bugs are sugar free because I just ate two pounds of them. So it was very cool. And the other coolest thing about a White Snake show, I'm a huge Sopranos fan. Andrea Di Matteo came. And who's she married to? She married in White Snake? I, I don't think they're together anymore. The bass oh. player. Uh... Yeah, I can't think of his name. She was in the, she's in the Sopranos. She's uh, Michael Imperioli's uh, girlfriend, Michael well, Devon. Michael Devon, there you go. And yeah. she was backstage. Oh, it was cool. Devin, yeah. yeah, it was cool. But how yeah. did the White Snake thing uh, happen for you, Kip? I didn't do White Snake. That's Reb. So Reb, uh, Reb was in. He's yeah, been I was one. I, I said I don't remember you in White Snake. No, no, no. no. No, that's I bet, but your guys in the band because I know there's some times that we have to plan around the White Snake tour. To bring yes, Winger. Reb Reb, Be Reb Beach is actually the longest living member, uh, you know, of White Snake outside of David Coverdale. He's been mm -hmm. in the band longer than any other individual wow. member. Yeah, um, and it's just you know it's just been a great gig for him. And 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 Rod was teaching at Berkeley for twenty years, and I was, you know, kind of doing all of my projects. So it was, uh, you know, w Winger as a band, kind of did our thing on the off schedule of white snake we would kind of do mm -hmm. it back and forth thing for years so is that um, that's where i was you know, going i mean has it affected you i mean there are times that you had to literally uh, uh guide your tour around based on what white snake was doing well and yeah something but it didn't really it's it hasn't been a problem because it's kind of like on when they're off you know kind of they go mm -hmm. out we, they make a record while we're out you know kind of back and forth but uh yeah, I mean, you know, it's a good gig. Reb's been in a lot of good bands. Dokken, Night Ranger, yep. White Snake, Alice Cooper. You know, he's he's uh, he's really got a hell of a pedigree. Hey, when you've been playing... Go ahead, uh, Carm. So where's Rod these days? Rod is on... in. He lives in Northport, uh, New York, and... Uh, We're still in Long Island, wow. Yeah, he's he's doing well. He's yeah, He, he doesn't... He just stopped teaching at Berkeley, and... Uh, well, he had, you know, his, his his father passed away recently, so that was kind of a not a oh, great man. thing. But uh, we're making, you know, I'll, I'll see him soon. We're we're going to be making a re we we cut his drum soon. But I talk to him every day. He's doing very well. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Sure said hi. I said hi for sure. I'm Vinny. I will. And by the yeah. way, if you guys don't know this gum, oh my God, oh, yeah. it's the greatest gum yeah. ever. <laughs> Put that in my dressing room, Ron. You got uh, it. Meatballs in that great. gum. That's all we need. <laughs> you know what? Uh, again, fortunate enough to have you play the Arcata so many times, not only with Winger, but we love when you play the Speakeasy upstairs with your solo show. A lot of guys try to pull off a solo. When I say solo, most guys who do solo shows bring two or three people with them on stage. You right. are a true solo. And you do two hours and what you give to the audience between stories, accessibility, uh, all the songs, they call out songs. I mean, it really, really is an amazing experience. It's fun, man. I, you know, I started that back when I started studying classical music because we were all out of a job. So it was like, what am I going to do? I guess I'll, uh, I did a Borders bookstore tour and I played oh, like wow. at 4 p.m. <laughs> to 10 people, you know, and a year before that I was playing to, you know, five or 6,000 people. So I, it was a long way down to the bottom and I, and I put my guitar, you know, I just carried my guitar around and played for 10 people. And I realized that it doesn't matter who you play to music heals your soul. And yep. you know, if it's one person you're, you're moving, that's, uh, that's right. You know, that was fine. You know, so I, I'm kind of one of the original guys who did the unplug thing. It was, it was 90 geez, 95 or 96. And, I, you know what? It, it was very organic evolution. I, I played four songs, really. And then somebody would say, hey, can you play that one song off your third album? And I'd say, I don't know. Let me try it. <laughs> you know? 
and I just built up a two hour set by fan request. That's how that all came to, came to be. And, uh, Super thankful that people show up to that shit. Oh, it's, it's, it's a sellout for us every time. We do a couple times, uh, two nights. I mean, it's, it's really something. And, and just to, uh, uh, also, on the, again, a selfish question for me. Because, you know, we pair up a lot of the bands. We'll do, you know, Docker and Dockett and Warrant. And uh, we'll do, actually, Dockett and... and, and yeah, That's I know. way better. I know. We were, get, we were getting worried you were getting into the black. I know. There you go. <laughs> I got my phone, my phone light on. That's good. That's good. That's good. You look like a queen. You look like a queen album, uh, with or a kiss album now. All of a sudden, hey, um, who is is there uh, any particular band? Your 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 warrants, your dockets, your firehouses, your YNTs, um, that you winger, you know, would like to co bill with that you enjoy doing things with. I love YNT. They're awesome. Oh um, yeah, fabulous. You know what? I like it. I mean, I honestly, I don't have a preference. I'm like, you know, whoever the whoever will bring in the right crowd, basically. I mean, right? Because I mean, I you know, I don't, I don't dislike playing with anyone, so, yeah. so it's fine. Uh, I, I mean, I'm sorry to to not give you like the awesome no, answer to that but. but we've done it we've done you and firehouse we've done you and warrant we've done you you know yt and and, and dave, dave benichetti they've, they've been growing still to this day they're growing their audience firehouse growing their audience i mean really really good bands so um is there um is there somebody that you would like to play with that you haven't yet because you've played with so many carmine there it is <laughs> I I knew the it table. Would say that. hey I, I, oh, Vinny. I mean, hey, Vinny, let's do a double drum thing. Well, you guys, we got it. We got the we whole got, show. We, we got the whole show. Drum wars, we do. That's uh, really awesome. Did well, you where, guys? Did you guys? You did you guys see? Um, we play solo too. <laughs> did you see King Crimson when they went out with three drummers this last go nah. around? I, I oh, saw. God. I saw videos of it. It's pretty crazy, man. Pretty crazy, man. Yeah, and so hey, all those great. They're all great drummers too. That was guys impressive. Yeah. So we do a thing, and this is we got we're having a, a great um, a great amount of activity here with our audience. I mean, a lot of comments coming in. Everyone's loving Kip. I tell you what, everybody freaking loves you. I tell you, and these two guys uh, that I get to be with every week. But we do this regular thing, kind of semi regular. We just started it uh, that uh, Mister Carmine put together. <laughs> it's called Name That Beat, and we're going to this time we're going to try to ask the audience to be a part of it. This is a uh, rough one. This is a rough hey, one to the audience. Fail. Yeah, and I got to say, you have to have, you got to be, I got to give them a hint, a little hint. You got to be a Vanilla Fudge fan, and you got to be a fan of a little bit early Vanilla Fudge. Yeah. All right? Let's see what we got for this week. All right, let me fail. see you guys. Here's one you might remember for the uh, oldies. We did this on Ed Sullivan, and it was a hit for us in the late 60s, if you know this song. Out of sync. All right, come on, you guys. Who is it? What could it be? Name I know what beat. it is. I know what really it is. Knows, really knows. Dave Ferris. Dave Ferris. Did any, anybody? Yeah. Dave, Dave Ferris. Dave Ferris, you got it. Good job, buddy. I tell you what, Dave, you got to email me, ron at oshows.com. I don't know what I'm going to send you, but we're going to send you something for guessing it. All right, buddy? Cool. We'll send you something cool. He's going to send you a $100 gift certificate for any yes. restaurant. Yeah. yeah. A meatball. Send him a meatball. $100 worth of meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> Which is basically four meatballs by me, but still. <laughs> Well, congratulations. Great job. Hey, uh, Kip, so now you've got Do another to... one. <laughs> Kip, Do we want to know. Everybody wants to know what's going on with the next Winger album. Well, I can tell you we've got like seven very good songs right now. We've, we've uh, you know, we go 
uh, I mean, anybody that writes songs will tell you that you'll write 20 and maybe you'll get a good one out of it. So we've written mm -hmm. a, a ton of not amazing ideas, but we've written so many ideas that we've, you know, built up, uh, you know, right now we got about seven that are what I consider to be, you know, our good stuff. And, uh, we're kind of right at the phase where I'm writing lyrics and, and uh, we got to cut drums still. We got most of the rhythm tracks done. We got to write a few more. Reb's coming tomorrow night. And, uh, uh, you know, we got, like I say, we need a, just a few more like up tempos because we're very famous for doing like mid tempo. Yep. Are you still yeah. writing the uh, gong parts and the timpani parts? Yeah, no, no, man. I don't, cr <laughs> I don't cross collateralize that. Uh, you know, I want to rock. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Don't you uh, don't you play to the drums, or you put the rhythm down first, then the drums? Yeah, you know what we do. Oof. Reb and I, you know what the thing was, man, is I on on our first couple Why? albums, we did the demos, and the demos crushed the real albums. And I and I got so I'm so mm. like beat the demo syndrome. You guys, I'm sure you know that shit. No like, demos, yeah, the demos are. It's the oldest story yeah. in the book. So what I so what I do is. I get the actual guitar sound that we're going to cut the record set up and everything's happening, the actual bass sound. And then we'll like write to a drum machine. And if it's happening, I will cut the guitars right there in the moment, you know, he comes up with them. So we capture the magic and it's on tape. So, wow. well, tape, yeah, Pro Tools, but. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Hey, what tape is that? Right. Scotch, yeah, what is that? Scotch tape or gaffer tape? Exactly. <laughs> and so then, and, and then, and then we, you know, Good. we'll bring Rod in when the, all the basics are done. And then I'll go back and play to Rod. Yes. Oh, right. There you go. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's how you got to do it. You know, yeah. you got to do it like that. Because Rod does some shit that just you know you got to let him do his thing, and then I right. come back and like and yeah, I yeah you got to play you got to play to the drums you know totally yeah you know cool. talk about demos you know uh, our demo if you keep hanging on was the demo that we released and that's the one that the big hit really? one take one take mono we sang it and played it all at once uh huh. Right. I mean, and that's the thing, you know, it's, I'm, it, you know, beat the demo syndrome is just awful. I mean, yeah. I have, I have a lot of, I'll leave them unnamed, but there's a lot of songs on, on my early albums where I'm like, man, you should have heard. Well, I released the demos actually. <laughs> I have, have a, there's a thing called the demo anthology where it's like, you know, check this demo out. It's way better than the record. You know? mm. Funny, well, that huh? sounds like it'd be a cool, like one part to your solo show. Well, I mean, I'd have to play, yeah, you know, no, because I wouldn't be playing them live, you know. So, I like to play. I I like to play live when I'm doing a live show. You yeah. know, I I uh, um, I saw a great uh, I don't know if it was a promo shot, a, cr a commercial for your box set. Um, they had out what, what what I mean, it was like a it wasn't a video for it, but it was like a like a extended commercial for it or something. You know what I'm talking about? Well, Frontiers put out, um, I've got four solo albums that are, what I did with my solo thing, this happened before my classical, and I, uh, you know, again, when the when the grunge thing happened, I, I, I we kind of disbanded and said, you know, I mean, we couldn't get a gig anyway, so it was like, let's all just go do our own thing, so I... I so you're saying, pardon me, you're saying Winger couldn't, like, the demand for Winger... Nobody, couldn't. nobody... Yeah, no. Nobody. When, we we when, were all really? dinosaurs, man. We yeah, were when, dinosaurs. When, yeah, when Nirvana oh. came in, it was it destroyed wow, everything. Wow, wow. Really? Sabbath, so, Sabbath, Sabbath, we went down to theaters. Really? We even what? one one show we took the Holiday Inn van to the gig. We all sat there and went, oh, this, this is good, isn't it? Come on. I, I remember <laughs> Tony, Geezer, and Ronnie, and me riding in the in, van. In those, in those days, also, I was playing with Edgar Winter. Vinny, I think you were playing with Dio before that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we played the same club together. The same Remember what? That? The same club. club. We, you, we played a club in somewhere in the Midwest that you guys played with Dio. Oh, yeah. And well, that, was, like, that was later on. Yeah, yeah it was in the Actually, 90s. that was the 80s. No, when it, when it, no when it was wasn't the 80s. It was the 90s. And uh, I went to I went spend most of the 90s in Japan. Hmm. Japan did really well. There, right? Yeah, yeah, I did really well in the 90s in Japan. Cool. Yeah. 
That's why I did, those guitar, bands, I did the guitar Zeus records that worked really, really well in Japan. Yeah, Europe and Japan. I mean, they. I know in Italy, they just appreciate you guys so much and playing. They're even yeah, playing. but in the nineties, the nineties, it was all the grunge, man. The only place I knew of was Europe, uh, Japan, that that really mm. would let us work. Let's put it that way. So you I, 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 look. I love international audiences. I mean, they're very good listeners, and they yeah. they they're, they're super devoted love. fans. You know? Yeah. Totally. Well, it's funny how they won't know they won't know the language, but they'll know your your songs word for word. Yeah, you know. Hey, why don't why don't why don't we do the next show or upcoming show of all of us in Kip's car? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love it. All four of us in the car. That's 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 <laughs> Kip's new show. Kip what, in the what, car. What, what kind of car are you in? Are we in a van? SUV. No, I have a little. No, man, I got a little Audi A3, uh, you know, uh, hybrid. It's, it's uh, I love it. It's, it's awesome. It's like a little rocket ship. Yeah, I had uh, I, I had a couple of A3s. I like Audis. They're good. Yeah. You got the new music coming out, Kip. Is it? I mean, ultimately, obviously. Um, do you plan or what's your thoughts on uh, releasing some of it? Obviously, uh, on vinyl. Everyone's starting. To, a lot of people are doing that uh, now. Do you have any desire to go to vinyl? Out on vinyl? Yep. Definitely put it out on vinyl, and uh, yeah, isn't that crazy? I mean, vinyl is like taking off. I've been—I was talking to a guy in the industry about it the other day. He's like, "You wouldn't believe vinyl is outselling CDs right now." Yeah, but but they're not selling like the old vinyl. The old vinyl, well, like that's all they like had. Five million then. vinyls now. <laughs> you know, if you sell eighty thousand vinyls, you're like smoking. Well, yeah, eighty thousand. That's a lot, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Somebody said I, I read somewhere that somebody I forgot who you're honest with. They did eighty thousand vinyls last year. You know, nineteen. And I forgot who it was. Jeez. And that, and they said that was humongous. And I said, that is humongous. Here? I mean, in, in, in nineteen, what was the nineteen? When I did my solo album, nineteen eighty-two, I did one hundred and ten thousand vinyls, and I didn't even make the charts. Yeah. yeah, but you're comparing two different things. Here. I, I, mean, I know. You know. I, I know. Hey, also, vinyls back then were three fifty, four dollars. Now they're twenty five bucks. Yeah. But they're collectible. I, I just stuff. bought a couple. Yeah, they're the thick ones, one hundred. Yeah, but grams. that's but that's inflation too, though. If you think about it, I mean, but know. that's a lot of inflation. It went up. But they're being uh -huh. sold as I mean, uh, albums come out at three fifty and become collectible. Now they're being sold as a collectible right off the bat. Yeah, you know, that's true. I, 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 you know what? I never collected much of anything. I Me have, too. I collect uh, composers' autographs. You know, I've got Debussy and Ravel and Liszt and stuff, really a, a bunch of that. But I, I do have a couple vinyls that would I should probably put on eBay. They're like pristine, man. Uh, you know, what? They're Winger worth vinyls? a lot of money. No, I'm just you know. From the, you know, a collection from the old days, but I don't even own a record player, man. So, no. I, you know. I just I, bought one. I just bought one. I have I have a little crappy one that my daughter gave me for Christmas. It was like a record player, a CD player, and a cassette player, and you could you could you know record the vinyl onto CD and uh, report the CD oh, onto the cassette. And it was a, and it was made yeah. like an old Victrola, you know. So if, if there's one songwriter or, or so, one composer's autograph that you can get right now, who would it be? Oh, you know what? It's funny you say that because I was just the, this morning, I, I, I did a quick five minute search for Eric Satie because I've really been, uh, you know, everybody knows Eric Satie is the uh, super famous melody. Ba, 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 ba. Um, and it's very simple, but he actually wrote some. I've been listening to a lot of his music and it was like, there's some really deep piano music. So I was like, you got to autograph. But, uh, you know, some of the, I mean, I, I actually have uh, a bunch of the ones of my favorite ones. You know, I, I've been acquiring them for, uh, you know, I don't know, 15 years. So. Huh. But some of them are nowadays, you can't get them so easy. Like, you know, if you wanted to get Wagner or something like that, you'd have to pay like you know. Oh, that's a hundred thousand. I mean, Brahms would be amazing. I don't have a Brahms. Hey, Kip, I have Eric's uh, autograph. <laughs> love <laughs> Eric. <laughs> I love it. You're crazy, man. I Little tell you what. Note on the top. We love missed that. you last week, there, Vinny. Yeah. We missed you. 
Hey, Kip. I don't know so, how we get in with Nugent. I don't know. Oh, that's no, that was, he, again. he was fun, man. He was fun. He wants yeah. to do it again with you. Yeah, okay. it was. It was fun. Hey, Kip, once again, I want to thank you so much for doing this with us, buddy. Oh, yeah, I mean, thank you guys. Great seeing all you guys, man. Yeah, yeah, you you too, man. yeah. Well, we want to tell everybody, make sure you like us, make sure you share us, make sure you tell all your friends about Artists on Lockdown, where each week we talk to some of the top people in rock and roll. This week, our special guest, Kip Winger, um, one of the best guys out there. Kip, wish you the best. Good luck on the new music. Stay safe. Thank everybody you. stay healthy. Um, ah. Hey, Ron, you know, next week is the Italian show. Hell yeah. It's about we time. Got Roxy Petucci. Right. From uh, Nixon, we got Jill Vitale. No. Talk about a history with Joe. Right you see Italian hey, Joe. Tell, you hey, make tell make Joe I said hi. I love him. He's awesome. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. I love him, too. He's a great guy. Well, yeah. today right. is October 1st, and it starts Italian Heritage Month. So this makes a oh, lot right. of sense. Yeah. That makes it Absolutely. Good next, oh. week, uh, next week at this time will be the Italian show will be done. Let's make some pasta. We should all make pasta and eat it. I'll bring uh -huh. meatballs to the party. You know that. Well, and then we've true. got then we've got Lita Ford. We've got D. Snyder. We've got some great guests coming up, like we did today. Once again, Kip, best of luck, my brothers, Vinny, Carmine. Love you. Woo! Thank, Thank you, you for the honor of being part of this. Everybody, Thank you very stay much, safe. you guys. Stay yeah, healthy. Cheers, bro. I'll see you. Good night, everybody. I want to hear some of that music. I want to hear some of that music, Kip. I'll send. I'll send it to you. Okay. Yeah. Thank Good you. Very much. Have a good one. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.